All right, right, right. We got a few minutes before I start. What's up, Hubers? Let me scroll down here. What's up, my gorilla, Caden? I'm just getting organized here. I want to make sure the stream gets set up good first. Um, because it always starts out with orange health, and I make sure it gets the old green, but we'll get going here. Trust me, I got a whole thing of notes. Don't want to show you them. Unless you hit pause, then you're going to see them. I was packaging up orders and everything, and uh, as I was uh, working today through teleconferences and change of the change of the change and uh, crazy deadlines for end of the week, I actually... Um, what's up, Ziggy? What's up, Jack? I actually overheard some, uh, some conversations about... Uh, a breaker and you all guys know about the word scam and stuff like that so are scammers and stuff like that and I basically take it you know to heart there are scammers out there there really really are if you guys want to know what like the biggest scam ever was look up DNT breaks uh, Brandon cooks out of 99 and that was a pure scam I mean you also got people just don't really understand breaking at all because believe it or not breaking started like 10 years ago i'll check it out caden oh no i'm just coming on here talking about uh breaking and the general rules over it it's like the unwritten rules repacks is very questionable i'll be honest on um I don't get many repacks because I don't believe in them because they only give you 50% value, and I think it's garbage. Uh, there's a few people that I know do uh, repacks that I would buy into because they make sure the value's in there. Or they really, really do. Yep, see, people know Brandon Cook's out of 99 is, but see, a lot of people don't realize breaking has been around for like 10 years, okay? And I started off on Breakers TV. And I'll, I'll, when I go through this, I'm going to give some people some examples of stuff that I did. By no means am I an expert, but I think a lot of people are uneducated and are not meaning to be a scammer. And as soon as you hear the word scammer, people run to Facebook, Twitter, and all that stuff, especially the scam group on Facebook. Man, they'll attack your whole family and <laughs> your job and everything. And so if you're a breaker, you know, a breaker out there that's not doing things properly, you can always educate them or have them look at the video. Don't bother me. Well, I mean, I, I'm doing a do a repack, but mine's going to be a little bit way different. Uh, it's going to be more of a Christmas thing, so value will be in it, overvalue. But I, I know a couple people make really good repacks, and I would buy into most of them. To me, are just they're horrible, very, very, very horrible. What's up, CVC? I'm just trying to make sure I'm catching her. But I know a lot of people are going to probably end up tuning in because of uh, listening to this, and I know a couple people hit me on the phone so they'll be listening. I. Yeah, my, my repacks will be well worth it. I'm not a person that's going to be doing them 10 times a year either. But, you know, it's stuff that I, basically my repack will be stuff I get graded in. You know, the value's already been there. But to the whole thing with the breaking, you know, there is a set of unwritten rules out there nobody talks about. And I think that's mostly due to people don't share information. When I started breaking... And we're talking to uh, either end of 15 or beginning of 2016. Nobody would help me because they're like, oh, man, it's another breaker. He's going to take our clients and profit and people headhunt and try to grab everybody's people on breakers. But two of the biggest people out there actually helped me out. Uh, Platinum Car Breaks and uh, Bateson from Nasty Breaks. And, I mean, they squared me away. They really did. So... You know, I'm going to give you what I was taught and some of my things that where I messed up at. And I'll even go into how I messed something up today and I had to make fix to it because, you know, I'm not perfect. The uh, technology gets me all the time. <laughs> Dibs all on repack. We do. That's why, Ziggy. That's why we do. We definitely, definitely do. But, um... Let me put you on there, man. I know there's somebody else who just come in here, too. This is one of the few times I can actually catch people and uh, mod you guys up. Because, you know, basically, that's all. The reason I wrench a lot of people is because if somebody does come here trolling and I don't have a chance, 
You guys just nail them, man. You guys know what to do. Breaking is very competitive. And unless you have somebody that's willing to help you and teach you, you're, you're going to get yourself in some trouble out there. You really will. So that you have to go out there and do a lot of research and do your homework before you even start. And I'm going to grab my pen out because as I start talking stuff, you know, we can, I'll just cross it off here. But first, I want to make sure everybody understands that I'm not pinning this on any particular breaker out there or um, seller or anything like that. This is just stuff that I've noticed over the past month. And breaking and sports cards is becoming more and more huge. <laughs> Apple pie moonshine. <laughs> I only will break with a few people now, to be honest. And it's nothing personal. It's just that's who I choose to break with, you know. Um, pricing's good. Shipping's good. It, there's a bunch of things I look at onto it, you know. That, that's just the way I am. But, like I said, I'm not going to point out anybody's names and stuff like that because hopefully they somebody squares them way down the road or says, hey, man, you need to watch Extreme's video. You know, it might help you out. No, YouTube is only one platform, too, okay? There is a bigger world out there than YouTube Breakers. You have Breakers TV that pretty much originated it. You Well, before that was Vaughn TV and everything else out there. But Breakers TV, Facebook groups, Instagram, I think Twitter even has breaks now. Probably Snapchat or whatever it's called, too. So if you get yourself, it's, you know, labeled on one platform, you're going to get hit on them all right off the bat. That is true, Ziggy. That's what I do. Um, at the same time frame, I'm a person. It don't matter if you're a 10-year-old breaking or a 60-year-old or 70-year-old breaking, man. All the rules exist for everybody. You need to take it to heart. Don't ever take it personally if somebody's trying to you know, tell you, hey, man, you're messing something up. I would try doing this. Because as soon as you hit that self-defensive mode, you can react wrong, and it'll burn you completely. So... Like I said, it's not age don't matter. It, these should pertain to everybody. I think people young and old or middle aged or whatever you want to call ourselves, um, getting into this man, it's a, it's a right time, and I support it a hundred percent. But make sure you do your homework on beforehand before you start up. Get the right equipment you're going to need to break with. <laughs> it's a big gamble, Mountain. It's a big gamble. Mojo breaks is a good one too. I, I broke with him a long time ago. Um, but make sure you invest in the proper equipment, your computer, whatever you're going to use to stream with the videos. If you're going to use a streaming program, uh, make sure you understand how to use it, your microphone, your settings, all that stuff, lighting, mats, just make sure you look at what all you're going to do. Make a checklist, you know, heck ask me, I'll send you a list of everything I use. You could take it and use it or you know, throw it away. I have no problem doing that. I've assisted a few people over the years in getting set up and that. I mean, that's what we're here for. We're here to help each other out. So just make sure you look at your equipment, what you're going to do and everything. And once you get everything set up, this is the biggest thing I could say is people are afraid to be behind the camera till they do it. It's nervous starting your first break. You can sit there and sell cards all day long. But as soon as you start a break, it's nervous, man, because, you know, you don't know what's in that product. It could be a skunk case. It could be a high hit in there. So I would recommend, like I did, I went on Breakers TV, and I did test runs with all my equipment, making sure people could hear my sound. The funny thing is, two people came on there that time, and uh, they helped me out, man. They made sure that I was square, and there's still two customers today. I mean, you're talking three, four, four years ago now almost. And... um Test run your equipment. Practice doing a break, man. Get a, get a couple packs of cards out for yourself and get in front of the camera while you're live and break them and stuff like that. You know, that's the best way to do it is get practice behind it because you're going to be playing with some big money if you start playing with the big products and everything out there. And I can't heart, man. Test your equipment out. Like, I come on early all the time. Wait till my stream help is green. That's why I come on early, just to make sure everything's good on to it. Sounds good. Um, all right. 
when you do set up, I mean, it don't matter if you're going to use, like, this is my main camera, okay? And I'm going to tell you, I can't tell you how many times I've knocked this camera over in the middle of a break. Oh, my gosh, because something big came out. I got excited. That's why a top camera is up here. It has everything down to, well, where's my hand at? About right here. So it can see all the product in front of me. You always, always, always want to keep everything as soon as you open that case or that box in front of you because people start questioning what's inside that stuff. So make sure you guys always keep everything on screen. I mean, I understand that once you open it and you put in that top loader and everything, you're going to put it off to the side. That's fine because it's already been shown what was inside that product. Don't be that guy. Dang, I had base cards here. Well, let me see what these are real quick. Uh, oh, these are paper. Okay. Don't be that guy that opens up Bowman and you know it's all paper and you're like this and you brick it right down because some people don't like that. Show all the cards. Even if it's not that quick, you know, you're going like this through them. Just do show all the cards. Yeah, you don't have to be fancy to be a breaker. You don't. It's about, you know, doing what you're comfortable with with breaking out there. It really is. It really, really is. You don't have to be fancy one bit. But just make sure you keep everything on the screen. Show everything in the product so there's never no questions about what was in that product. If you open, I mean, there's times you're going to try to open up a full football helmet if you do memorabilia. That's hard to get all on camera. Flip it around, pull it out, show certificates and all that stuff, you know, with it the best you can. If you want to keep everybody that's in that break to have no question in their mind that what you're pulling out is what was in that product. And there's nothing extra into it, especially them hidden tickets and stuff that go in there. Um, the other thing I will tell you when you're opening cards up, you know, respect the cards. Whether they're yours or definitely somebody else's, respect them. I can't tell you how many times that I've watched people. I'm trying to find a top loader. don't have anything in it. And this is no joke. One, they'll sit there and they'll take the sleeve. And they're getting it in the sleeve. And they jam it in there. There goes corners and edges on the card already. Then they're trying to get the top loader. If you got to take that thing off camera like I do. Because my eyes are not good from all the carbon from shooting guns. I take it off, I take it back on, I tap it down if I have to, whatever it may be. But don't bring it back on there and take it and be like, oh, look what he got, and you start bending that top loader. I've seen people do this. Respect that car. Don't be bending in a top loader and stuff onto somebody. and Don't take it, and when they're taking the cards and they're throwing their own cards like this, like, oh, nobody wants it, all right, next one. Toss it down. It shows there's no respect there. And that's a big thing with me. If I walk into somebody's room and selling cards and they have no respect for their own, I'm definitely not breaking with you because now i got to trust you to put in the sleeve a top loader and ship it properly. Uh-uh. Yeah, some guys will say every name. Depending on the product, I might say every name. If not, I'm just going to show them all on camera. Yeah, I was wrenching everybody I could, Caden. Um, cause a lot of you guys come in here all the time and I'm in the middle of doing stuff and I really, really am bad about wrenching people. Um, but I figure I'd start getting it done now because like I said, if people come in here and start trolling and I'm in the middle of something, I would rather you guys nip it in the butt quick than me because then I got to stop what I'm doing, lose my train of thought in the middle of a break. Just one of those things there. But please, if you're going to think about breaking, respect the cards and the product. Because otherwise, by you slamming cards in cases and stuff, you're, you're going to get labeled. And people are going to notice and you're going to wonder why things aren't breaking. People aren't coming to chat with you and everything else. Um, I'm a person, and I'm not saying you have to use gloves. I use gloves because even regardless if I wash my hands, my hands are oily. They I get dirt up off of here, off the packs. I started only using it if they were cards that weren't encased or basically chrome and stuff like that. I'm not saying you have to use gloves. It's just one of those things offhand. And if you're going to break a product, do your research on the product beforehand. Because if you don't know that product, you start looking not smart. I don't want to say dumb or stupid, but 
you know, and people are like, man, he has no idea what he's talking about. And I'll be the first person with all this new product that's come out. I can't think of every refractor color and style like Revolution Astro, and then you have Disco and Prism. But ask people in there, be like, hey, I forget what the heck this variation is. What's it called? I'm telling you, people have been breaking all day. They will tell you what it is if you don't know. Or look it up. I always believe in asking the people in the chat. Now, what was this dang thing called? I can't remember because I, I can't get the prisms and optic names and everything else straight because there's just too many variations out there. And somebody might love that product so much that they know it. But try to educate yourself on your product before you break it. Um, especially if it's not a brand new thing they just released. It'll just help you out in the long run on to it. Also, when you're breaking, and this is something I do, and I know other breakers do it too. When you're breaking chrome, you know there's some kind of debris on the chrome card. <laughs> you know <laughs> there is some chrome on the card. I'm laughing at chat, guys. So if you're re-watching this video, like, what's he laughing at? Um, wipe the stuff off. Get yourself. Crap, where did I put it at? Is that all kind of stuff out because I cleaned the other day? Get one of these little microfiber cloths, wipe the person's chrome card off before you stick it in a sleeve and scratch it up because there's debris. Can't, whoops, canned air. Don't go push it the whole way to where you blow the freaking freeze onto it. Just a little nice little, just like that, and it'll come right off too. Make sure you do stuff like that for people. They're going to appreciate it a lot. Um... If you notice damage to the card because there's scratches, a bent corner, whatever it may be, show it on camera. It covers both you and the person that purchased that spot in a break. At the same time frame, if they're going to mail that back to Panini or Tops, they need that video evidence. That's how it came out of. <laughs> Five spots sold, huh? Oh, gosh. Um... That, that there is really huge on, you know, with, especially with chrome cards and prism, mosaic, optics. Do a little wipe down beforehand onto the card, especially when you're pulling a Zion or Jaw, Dominguez, Franco, whoever it may be, something big. I, I try to do it on everybody's stuff just to make sure it's on there and look, and look at the light and stuff, see if there's some printer lines and stuff onto it, just so they know, hey, man, you know, Extreme didn't mess up their stuff. Uh, probably the next thing I want to cover is be if you mess up. So, what, regardless how you mess up on camera, whether you, you know, you're stacking your packs and you notice that they're a little bit out of view and you start tapping them over. Hey, sorry guys, I didn't realize that was out. Apologize because you weren't paying attention. Whether whatever the mess up is, you know, offhand. At no time should you be having to make a freaking video of, you know, a mess up. Why it was a mess up. You messed up. You know, the biggest thing is to suck it up as a learning lesson and just, you know, move on past it. Um, I can't tell you, like, DNT was the biggest scam of all, but there's a bunch of scam videos out there if you watch them. And you'll see people make videos afterwards, and they'll come out and be like, well, there's no proof that, let me think how it was worded. I can't prove to you it wasn't in the pack, and you can't, and wait, what was it? You can't prove, you can't prove I took it out of the pack, or... And they, they come out with something, and then they have that snippy mark, in, but you can't tell. That's what it is. You can't tell me what was in the pack, and you can't prove that I took it out. That just makes me think right then and there it's real skeptical. Don't do stuff like that. Man, be like, I messed up, man. I'm sorry. I didn't know. You know, my bad. Whatever it may be on to it. Make it right. Whether you got to go out and buy that, do a brand new card, or whatever it may be. Example, I linked my store to eBay with uh, Bowman Hobby Boxes uh, this weekend. My understanding was when it sold on eBay, it took the inventory out of my store. Guess what? It didn't take it out of my store. Somebody bought a box. I sent a message today. Hey, man, 
I don't know what went on, blah, 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 blah. I do apologize on the whole thing. I have to place an order to say, let me buy you a Bowman Holly box. They'll be here Friday. I'll ship it out Saturday. <laughs> yeah, you got to watch on that, Gorilla. I, mean, I freak out, too. I, I shake a lot of times. Yeah, exactly, Kate. And if you say you can't prove it, that just means you're guilty right off the bat. It really does. It really, really does. And it makes them look like a butthead, man. I'm trying not to swear because I don't know if anybody under age 18 is on here and stuff like that. But don't do it. But like I did, I bought the Bowman box today. It comes Friday. I told my, hey, I had to ship it to the UPS store because NT now has to be signed for. And I... Oh, I, th I thought somebody just got something. I had a question on my store thingy. I have weird things that pop on my phone. And I bought it and said, hey, I'll have it out to you Saturday. And they were fine with it, and I was happy. I was like, man, I'm sorry, man, big mess up. I got to figure out and talk to Shopify, like, what did I do wrong, you know? But things will happen. It's beyond your, without, beyond your control. Apologize. And, you know, do whatever you need to be nice about it. Don't come off as a smart person, you know, where – your parents just looking bad by doing that, man. I watched the video and I was like, why would you say that? You know, I can't prove, to, that's what it was. I can't prove to you what was in the pack, uh, that, that it was in the pack and you can't prove that I took it out. Man, don't say stuff like that. That's just going to ruin you completely. You know, yeah. But regardless if you're 10 years old or 70 years old, man, you got to learn, man, how to be a salesman and how to take your licks and everything else onto that stuff. You know, that's just bad. In instance like that, I probably if I took a pack off a camera and, you know, something looks shady onto it, I probably would have refunded the whole thing and probably sent them something or turned the camera around like, look, dude, there's no way I have anything anywhere in here. Unless the dog ate it, but. She don't like baseball cards. But, yeah, that's why the whole thing is keep everything on screen. If you mess something up, apologize, fix it, move on, because that's the best way of doing it, honestly. <laughs> Man, some of the hits I pulled, I shaped like the, I can't even think, the Triple Auto, Watson, Mahomes, and Trubisky. The, that had me shaking. The, the Baker Mayfield RPA back when he was hot had me shaking. People know. I'll be like, hold on, I got to get my hand from shaking. It'll be shaking on camera. I'll put it back down, you know, and everything like that. Make sure, too, that you guys have, if you start breaking your proper supplies, all the different size top loaders. Yes, it's expensive, but make sure you have them because I'm telling you, relics and different products need a 120. Some need 100. Some need 109. Some need 130s, 180s. And you don't want to be shoving something in tight and you don't want it in there very loose. Now, obviously, there's going to be some of those that are out there. You know, go ahead and do it. Well, I don't believe in one-touching Bowman Chromes. If somebody asked me to, I place the card in the Bowman Chrome. I take one of these sleeves and I stick it on top. Gently put the top of the magnet uh, one-touch back on. So that card, if it's moving, like, you know, back and forth, that auto does not get ruined because we all know things don't fit right in the perfect world. Um, if you're going to want, make sure you have one touches, man. Guys like one touches too. If you're going to be a going out and be the breaker, have one touches for them big, huge, you know, uh, 130, 180 point cards that come out. Guys like that even putting a one touch they feel special with that i know i do i love it when i see something yeah the boggs barrel as a matter of fact when i pulled that boggs uh bat barrel i put it in there all nice i put that sleeve on top even though there's no auto there's nothing sliding against the top of that plastic except for that sleeve and it just helps with it you want to make sure things fit in there tight there's times where stuff will not fit into a uh a one touch and if you keep those little backers, I call them the dummy cards in Panini and Topps products, you might be able to lay one of those down inside the one touch and put the card on top and it fits nice and snug. If not, put in a top loader, send them the one touch with it. They can figure out how to do it afterwards. <laughs> 
hey, it only gets better from there, Mountain Gorilla. It only gets better from there when you start pulling out some even crazier things that are in the thousands. But and also make sure you have proper stuff to package your cards up with. The, this here is just going out, but I didn't mean to have this up for example. I just I didn't want it on the floor because stupid cat will want to lick it or something. Yeah, my cat likes to lick. I have no idea why. But um, these two here, these are bubble envelope. Actually, all these have a bubble envelope inside a bubble envelope. That's me. You could use whatever you want, but package stuff up good. Because this stuff's going to get thrown around by USPS, UPS, whatever it may be. When I mail boxes, man, I put that stuff in there with bubble wrap. I don't use peanuts. Do not use peanuts. People hate peanuts. I hate when I get something in the mail and it has peanuts into it. That stuff goes everywhere. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You guys drop links, man. It's totally fine. <laughs> You get all kind of colors. It just depends. Like these here, or the one on the bottom, I don't like the bubbles they're using inside of it now. So I got the black mailers coming, and they're a lot better. Um, that's why I use two in there, and I still use cardboard around stuff. Pack. Don't use freaking packing tape either. Go out, get yourself some of this uh, plumber's tape here, and use that instead. Get team bags, all that stuff. That's why I say it's expensive when you're starting out trying to be a breaker. You're going to spend some money. In 2016, yeah, it was January 2016, because I did all my licensing in November and December. I probably dropped, and this is without product, with buying sleeves, equipment, all that. I bet you I dropped $1,500 easy. Easy. <laughs> What's up, Chris? No, no, man. I, what happened was there's a lot of new people out there that are breaking and nobody's like taking care of them, you know, and they're like opening packs off camera or they're opening the box up and pushing the packs off to the side. So I figured I'd do a little video, man, of stuff that was taught to me by some of the greats in the business and some of them aren't even around anymore because they invested properly in optic. <laughs> hey, whatever you do, don't use packing tape to place over a top loader. I had a guy send me a $300 card who's been buys and sells like crazy thousands in the day. And he sent me a card worth $300, not team bag, not nothing, in a top loader with packing tape over it. Come on now. <laughs> You know, they can, and it, it's one of those things where it's been eating me up really inside for the past month of going to these other channels on YouTube and listening and watching, whatever it may be, and just seeing poor quality across the board. And to be honest, Chris up there, um, that just come in, he's broke with me before. He's with Card Vision. I think you're still on Card Vision. Uh, yeah, I've seen you in Rut's room and stuff like that. So he knows exactly. What's up, boy? With all the shipping stuff like that, man. And one of my pet peeves is you're going to have somebody that prints a shipping label on a Wednesday and they don't drop it off to the post office till next weekend. I will never get from you again. My new cardinal rule. <laughs> I have a long list of people. And this is no joke. They can razz off an honest Wagner for half price and I won't get in because I know their shipping's horrible. Whether it's the shipping time or shipping packing, whatever it may be. <laughs> yeah, blue tape inside, all this stuff was... Cause I mean, seriously, I take it to these edges. And the only reason I tape these down is because, even on it like that, I try to get them together the best I can is a lady at the post office told me about it. When these go through that conveyor belt, these edges, they can catch, get flipped off the conveyor belt, and get lost and ruined. So that's why I do it.
Oh, I'm glad it's helping some people out. I mean, it, it's something that I've been meaning to do for a long time. I mean, I've sh- sh- talked about how to start up your, you know, a business with licensing and stuff on a video a while back. I think I did two or something. But nobody's ever really came out and been like, don't do this. You're going to catch yourself in some trouble. And I'm telling you, if somebody takes you to that Facebook scammers page, those dudes are ruthless. And, man, you are guilty until you prove yourself innocent ten times over. No lie. No lie in that. And if anybody knows what I'm talking about, yeah, then you definitely do because those dudes will come after your family on Facebook. Freaking, they'll call your places of employment. They find everything out about you. Yeah, Scotch tastes the same thing. I've seen that done too. I'm like, come on. I mean, I- I've seen such poor shipping over time. If I know you're a person that you know is in the hobby and you spend a pretty buck. And then your shipping is poor. I'm done. I won't ever get anything from you again. You have a wrench? I gave you one just now. A little bit ago. <laughs> you just never really come on here, man. You, you hang out on Facebook. The old Facebook. Yeah, I gave you one so that's when you pop on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awkward moment, huh? Yeah, I don't think it gives you a notification until you actually uh, see some. I uh, See, I used to cast on risers. A lot of people don't know. The only person probably in here is Chris and knows I used to be a caster on risers. And, man, yep, those were the days back then. We had some fun. Especially with uh, giveaways. But, yeah, I mean... It, Anybody, you know, out there, if they're young, they're just starting out or old starting out, man, give them some help. Point them to this video if you want. Don't matter to me. Be like, hey. But whatever you do, try not to hit them in a chat to where you have what I call the vulture effect. Where you're like, oh, man, you should you take the camera off, you scammer. Because as soon as you say something like that, everybody jumps on Oh, I call the bandwagon, man. It, it just ruins somebody. You hit them up after the break or something. Like, hey, man, what's your email? I want to send you something. You know, and tell them, hey, I wouldn't do this. It's not very professional, you know, and explain to them why and tell them how to fix it. Just be a lot, a lot of people do that. For your new experiment. R.I.P. Razors. R.I.P. Razors.com. Man, I spent so many nights in risers that one time. I think I went nine nights straight. Oh, Chris, you know about the scammers page on Facebook. I know you do. Whew. Them dudes are ruthless. Ruthless aggression. Make sure you have everything if you're going to post somebody's a scammer, too. Wow. You ever want a, what I call good toilet bowl reading, man? Get on the scammers page on uh, Facebook, and you, you just read the comments. You will just laugh, man, some of it. Yep. <laughs> but, yeah, if, if you guys want to start breaking or doing stuff and you ever have questions, feel free. Email me, Facebook me, whatever it may be. Get my attention. I'll answer questions all day long on what I messed up on to begin with and how I had to bounce back to, hey, this is where I get my supplies or whatever it may be. I have no issue at all helping anybody out. <laughs> oh, yeah, everybody's next. I, I am far from an expert. I just want to help out with everything. Now, I will tell you, like I said, man, uh, Bates... And uh, Dave on Platinum Car Breaks, man, they they squared me right away. And then that day when I was running practices on uh, Breakers TV and I was opening up packs for myself just to see how it looked and the volume was good, I had two dudes come in there. And what's funny was, like, do you have any product? And I'm like, yeah, but I don't know if I'm ready to open yet. And they're like, what do you got? And I had 2016 Bowman, or was it 2015 Bowman Draft? No, it might have been 16. I had one of the two. Anyhow, 
I think it was 15 Bowman draft. And they were like, hey, I'll buy a box right now. You could open up for practice. And I'm like, all right. You know. Oh, the business license is the hardest thing to do. Because it takes a lot of time and calling around. But once you get it, you're good. That's that's probably one of the hardest things to do. No, Razzing is not bad, Mountain Gorilla. Um, it's a cheap way for a chance to win something big. And to be honest, you know, I still get into Razzes. I go into different rooms and stuff like that to where... Hey, Cardinals fan. Um, to where, you know, it's a bunch of people. That everybody knows each other. And there's one group I'm going to tell you now. This dude is from Pittsburgh. If you're a slow shipper, he will chew you out. You have 72 hours, which is more gracious to ship out a card. You don't do it, he will drop you. You'll never come back. And I'll tell you, at least four or five other groups see it, and they're gone. Uh, before I started breaking Mountain Gorilla, because I knew there was tricks to the trade, and I just didn't know what it was. And I found that, you know, having a business license got me to save a little bit on cost to where I was able not to have to upcharge because, like, if you're breaking Bowman Chrome full case, you're going to go through four or five packs of top loaders easy probably some days, at least four. So that's why I did it, and it really, really helped out a lot. Uh. Oh, that's not an actual auto. That's a, what do they call it, facsimile it's on there. Though all the cars in that year have those on them. But, I mean, it's very easy to do a business license. All you got to do is go think of whatever you want to call your business. Go on the IRS website. Apply for your EIN. I would call them and have them walk you through this desk because it was so confusing to me. They hooked me up. Took about 30 minutes. Got that. And then I was like, oh, now I can go get product. No, you can't. You have to go get your state sales tax license. And I just did mine as a wholesale uh distribution it was free everything's free and they walked me through had that license all within an afternoon and then i started getting with distributors and creating counts now i will tell you the hardest part is now with the wayfair act if you reach certain thresholds and paypal will report you because they have a form if you sell, I forget what it is, like 2,000 items or $20,000 in a year. They give you a form, and trust me, those states get it reported to. That's why I have somebody that does my stuff. I have tax chart that calculates between the store, eBay, and PayPal, and it knows to, you know, if it's something that's doubled or tripled up to kill it. But then she compiles all that, and I have to pay every year sales tax on uh, every state that I have to be, I've met the threshold at. Yeah, unless you want to get, like, product like Bowman and stuff at a dirt cheap cost, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's what it was called, Chris. I, I, in Kentucky, they call it a wholesale resale distribution license. Yeah, David, that, that's it. You get that business license and get that tax license. You got to think, you want to be a sole proprietor, LLC, or an incorporator. I want a sole proprietor. But yeah, the state sales tax is hard because, see, eBay collects it for you and sends it out as eBay, but not as you. So you have to take consideration when you make that sale, eBay paid it, and then you have to file all this crazy stuff. That's why I got somebody to do it. It was a headache. I do taxes on the side, but man, when I had to start playing with state sales tax outside of Kentucky, I was done. 
So I hired somebody and uh, pay them, and they do it all. Now, when I sell stuff like it shows that I got to import it on an Excel document to her and everything, but she took probably, this is no joke, probably 200 hours away from me doing that all the time. What's up, Brian? How you doing? Yeah, if your state doesn't have taxes, you're good. Yeah, Florida's one of them. I know that. I think it's like Florida, Wash Washington or Oregon. Somebody else. There's only like five total out there that you don't have to pay sales tax in. And then there's only like, I think, 34 under the Wayfair Act, but it keeps growing. And you have to stay on top of it. That's like I said, that's why I hired somebody because there's no way I was going to do it. Tax Jar does it for me. And I think that's like a two or three hundred dollar program per year. It pulls all your stuff in. But if you use friends and family, it doesn't take that in consideration. Then you got to load that in by spreadsheet and all that stuff. It's a painful process. That's why I just got it all together and knocked it out with somebody who was smarter and had more time to do it than me and it's quicker. They do it on a routine basis. Oh, not bad. Not bad. Wednesday, man. They got me on a lot of conferences today with short deadlines and trying to move people around, so it's going to be a fun one through the rest of the week. Everything's got to be done by Friday, and I'm like halfway done. It could be. Because technically, even if you sold one card for $100, you're supposed to pay tax on it. The catch is to know how to... I don't want to use the word itemize because it kind of comes in bad, but how to cut everything else that you spend, whether it's shipping, gas mileage, the post office, everything, internet, cell phone, all that. Write-offs, basically. And that's what I, I'm, I learned in the long run, everything I do on a write-off for profit. So where it says I make like 40000 profit, we'll use for an example, I can get that thing wrote on, down at least to twenty. Heck, my, this office in my house is actually a uh, write-off because of square footage, electricity, all that. She did all that. I wasn't going that far into it, but hey, a couple extra thousand on a write-off, definitely good. It is. And the other thing I learned, Chris, that she told me, which kind of does help and does not help the same time frame, is at the end of the year, if you have a big profit, go buy a ton of stuff. And then, if you even if you overpay for it, it's only what the value of it is. But I, I, at the end of the year, November on, you'll see me spend a lot of money that way. Just so I can get rid of stuff, and then you have to carry product over and everything else, which is a painful thing to do, too. But yeah, everything I do, going to card shows, the gas mileage, you know, buying at the show, um, marketing, I can't even think about it. I have card insurance even. Everything out there you want to do. Yeah, friends and family, man. It, it's, it's good and it's also the devil. And that's the thing is if you're advertising as a new breaker that you're only accepted friends and families, that's my biggest flag right there. I'll give you an extra dollar just to send goods. No, I don't have anything to crack. Friday night, Caden, I have a box of 1819 Don Russ, and I forget what they're called, fat packs coming in. Looking for some Luca and Trey Young magic. I don't know anybody that breaked in today or tonight, honestly. I mean, if you go on breakers dot breakers TV, breakers dot TV, there's always people breaking on there. All the time. Yeah, you do. You do. You gotta write off every piece of that on there as much as you can. Even if you don't make the threshold, though, Mountain Gorilla, if you know that you're buying a lot of stuff, you can write it all off. 101 feathers. 101 emus. 101 emu feather. You can write it off, take a couple thousand dollar loss for the year, and it comes off your taxes. 
That's all it is, the Schedule C. Basketball draft? Hockey? Maybe baseball. Uh, you, know, you don't watch any other sport but baseball. Baseball draft. Yeah, I have folders for all my stuff on my computer, man. It says receipts, what year, all that stuff. <laughs> I, I, man, bro, through the years, I've become very, very, uh, I guess you could say, I don't want to make fun of somebody has OCD, but, you know, onto that stuff, because in 2008, we'll just say I was uh, looked at, and I'm the person that, I add my totals up and I subtracted 10% because that's what I was taught doing taxes. Well, we'll just say somebody owed me a lot more money at the end of that. And they stopped about 30 minutes into it when they seen what I was doing. Yeah, you always got to get the information flow out there. Now, I just wish like a lot of the people like the breakers on YouTube, they're brand new, whether they're just opening a box up for somebody or packs or trying to do breaks would actually just watch and learn. And if you really want to learn what some experienced breakers do, I mean, look at breakers.tv. Go watch Platinum Card Breaks. That's probably, well, you got to watch who's on there. But if you go in during a day and Dave's on there, that dude is meticulous with placing your card in a holder, dusting, cleaning it off so it doesn't get scratched up. Um, man, I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody take better care of placing somebody's card in a holder than him. Yeah, don't bear paw, man. There's somebody that does that. And if you watch when I do mine, I'm just going to pull a base card out. So when I have my gloves on, it actually looks like that I'm bare pawn. I'm not. It's sitting right there on my pinky. That corner is not touching anything because of the way I hold it. It's just laying back at an angle on there. So when I'm going through, I'm just going like this. I guess I can get a stack. Let me see what I got here. So if I open a box up, because the gloves are kind of weird, I hold them like that right there. It's basically this middle part's on the ridge of my palm cocked and my fingers there. And I'm just rolling just like this in an angle. So you guys got to be careful onto that stuff, man, about people's cards. That's their money they invested into it. And as soon as one person goes on social media nowadays and posts something bad about you, it's everywhere. <laughs> Jeez, the fastest dude I ever seen put a card in the sleeve of the top coder, man. But everybody has their own methods, you know, with it and stuff, too, you know, on how to do it. I'm a, I'm a big person on, you know, I take my time with the breaks. I don't rush them. I don't, you know, skip over stuff. Yeah, during a lot of the breaks, like Top Series 1, I'm skimming through quickly onto stuff. But that's what you, you got to do, because otherwise you'll be like me and open a master case of uh 2018 donruss and take three and a half hours because the cards are going every which way you just gotta think how to cut a little bit of time down because people start getting bored when you're in the long breaks You get those packs that can't open right, just cut the top off and peel away and stuff, you know. Some people open them packs up so rough, man. They're like digging corners and edges onto it. Gotta, gotta be careful with stuff. Definitely gotta be careful with handling other people's stuff. If you're just opening stuff for yourself, you don't need to apply if it comes off camera or whatever it may be because it's your stuff. But when you have somebody else's stuff, man, you gotta be very, very careful with it. Especially even afterwards with shipping and everything, because you know the post people, regardless of who you use, UPS, FedEx, DHL, freaking regular USPS, they're not going to be gentle. So you want to make sure that person gets it. 
And here's the thing. If somebody is spending a lot of money, say they you're opening up something or selling something, my golden rule is if it's over $300 and I sell it to you, I'll put insurance on to it. But if it goes over 1000 yeah, we're going to have to talk about if you want insurance on because I'm only covering up to a certain amount. And trust me, a lot of people... Later, Void. Have a good evening. A lot of people will pay for that insurance. Trust me, they will pay for it. Man, the market is so crazy. So, so crazy anymore. You got to pick who you think you're going to invest in. I'll give you a clue. I've been, most people know Ben Simmons because nobody's touched him yet. Vintage. Nobody's really going back in the 70s and buying. And recently, everybody knows Nick Foles went to the Chicago Bears. I think Trubisky's a good quarterback. I think he's just in a bad spot. I've been buying Trubisky's. I just got a silver prism for like 45 bucks shipped. Silver prism of Mitch Trubisky. I'll take that as a gamble. That's be better than me going out and paying $200 on a Drew Locke prism silver who's never played at all. Maybe he played some games last year. I don't know. But still, Trubisky at least has a season or two out there. You do. You do. And it was, it's been a big market fluctuating up ever since uh, probably December, man, to be honest. Minshew, there's another one. You know, because everybody's out after the hot quarterbacks and they never pay attention. Like, think about 2000. Hold on. Baker Mayfield was 18, so, or 19. 18 would have been Mahomes and Watson, I believe. Or maybe 17, I forget, man. No, 17 was Mahomes and Watson. Everybody went after Deshaun Watson. Nobody went after Mahomes. And you could get Mahomes at dirt cheap and now look at the prices of Mahomes. Mannings are cheap somewhat if you're going ungraded. Graded ones like PSA 10s, whoo, they're pricey. And the thing is, I don't like buying a lot of ungraded stuff off of eBay because I just hate having to see it and it comes in and I got to do a return and then the people just get upset and I'm like, dude, this is not a good graded card. If I buy a raw card, the lowest if I grade it should be a 9 to be near mint. When you start getting eights and seven fives back, uh uh, no. Bad idea. Especially how a lot of the chrome come in, they have all them scratches on and stuff. That's why I said when you're sit when you see me opening up, like especially Bowman Chrome this year, I took the car, this is actually sleeved, and I was going like this with them trying to look to see if there were scratches. It sucks to let somebody know it's in your brake and has scratches on. It's the worst feeling to do at all. But after you start doing it long enough, you know, people do respect it. I respect somebody saying, man, I'm sorry, there's some scratches on it. It might come out, though. You know, there's ways to get some of them light scratches out, trust me. I'm trying to see what I... I thought maybe I had some extra things laying here, but I don't really. Cleaned up pretty good in here the other day. Dawson? Oh, no, I was probably... Oh, that Andre, this one? No, I just sleeved it because I was looking at him when I opened this yesterday and trying to find some PSA 10s that were through there. So when I was going through real quick, I just sleeve them just so in case when I grab them, I don't sit there and jack up a corner i mean it's not the best protected but it's somewhat protected until i decide yay or nay then it either goes into a top loader or it goes into a uh, saber two for grading
I mean, PSA 10 of that, probably 15 bucks. But you'd have to bulk order those and stuff like that. You'd be surprised. And that's why I said if you're going to go out and buy product and you're just go all about the grading, before you buy that box, type it in eBay, like say 1985 Tops PSA 10. Sort it highest to lowest. Yes, it sucks scrolling through it all, but you start looking at all the cards that have sold and you can be like, well, you know, there's 30 cards out there that are worth over 50 bucks a PSA 10. If I pull one or two of them, Maybe it pays for your box. Maybe it doesn't. Especially when you're looking at the junk wax there from like 87 and up. I mean, now 87 tops is probably like 30 bucks a box. But back in the day, I mean, you were getting them for like 5 bucks, if that. And you could sit there and look at McGuire, Canseco, uh, Larkin, Nolan Ryan, Bo Jackson... There was a couple other ones. I think Palmero, Bonds, Flyer can say all those dudes there. PSA tens would definitely even today would still pay for over that box, way over any of them. But odds you pulling that perfect centered one is slim. But do you, would you rather spend thirty bucks on that? Or would you rather go out and buy a pack of Bowman for thirty bucks and get nothing at all? Oh yeah, there's all. You gotta really look at the market. Now I'm gonna, that's why I bought that eighteen nineteen Donruss Fab Packs, eighteen nineteen with Luca and Trey Young. Every product's high up there. Hobby is very expensive. Even if you can find the Fab Packs like I did for the price, it's under Hobby price. You're gonna pull base Lucas and Trays that can grade and definitely pay off. <clears throat> but it's you have to be willing to take a risk on a lower end product to make the money, sell it, then you can go buy what you want. And that's what I've done for the last four years. I hoard. I have a big hoarder of cards. Um, I will stock like I did Lucas up, and then when he was hitting silvers for thirteen hundred for a PSA ten, that's when I sold half. Sold the other 25% about three weeks later when they bumped up to like 1800 Made a killing. Kept about eight or nine Lucas. They're graded upstairs. And those will hold forever. If he becomes LeBron James status, you know, 10 years down the road, and people are paying now ten to 20000 for one of them, game on. But you always got to look at your profit margins and stuff and you, you, what your risks are over time. Who you're really going to put money into. A lot of my Lucas I won in Razzes or I was in a break and I lucked out and, you know, got a good team. Same with Trey Young's. Heck, I got a total in one order of six Prism regular rookie Zions, four Optics, and then another one I put two more in where I hit them in a break and I found two that were centered really good. But by the time they all come back, Hey, I'll take a $500 card easily. It only takes one PSA 10 in any of my orders to cover the whole PSA order. And then probably maybe a couple of them that balance as nines. Sell them and I'm pretty much even on my stuff. But know what you put into your stuff too. That's the hardest thing. People just start spending and they go into debt. I can't tell you how many people I've seen go into debt over sports cards in the past three years because they get carried away. They'll be like, well, you know what? I can just eat some bacon and eggs all week <laughs> for the next three weeks and I could buy that box of uh, prison basketball and nothing was in it. My biggest thing is every product that I get, <laughs> yeah, that would really help too. I've known a lot of people go through divorces over it too. Oh, do I know a lot too on that. Probably one of the reasons why I'm still single, and 
I just don't have time for anybody. The woman would have to be in the baseball cards for me to really, really uh, probably even start a relationship where she'd have to own her own business or something to where she has an idea of the time and effort it goes into this stuff. And then to turn around time like, hey, you know, we're going to sell this part here and go on a vacation or remodel the whole kitchen, whatever it may be. <laughs> You do. You have to really be patient, hoard stuff. I mean, when I open a box up of stuff, normally I go through, take everything out, and it's going to go out and get graded. Normally, everything else I will put in a store, and what I put in a store will normally pay for the box. So the grading afterward is just pure profit. But that's also on a distributor level getting the product. That's not getting Prism at $600 a box. <laughs> That's getting Prism at like under $100 a box. Or $120, whatever it was. Because the overall value I know is in it if you can get pre-order prices. And not pre-order like Dave and Adam and blowout prices. The other way is win a box or a case of cards and a Raz. But then again, nowadays with the prices of cases, just spot price has gone up from like a hundred dollars to probably three hundred dollars, two hundred, two fifty, two fifty for a decent product easily. And are you really, really willing to gamble a ten percent chance with that kind of money? I ain't gonna lie. I mean, I've thought about a bunch of times to where. I would see like a Bowman or Bowman Chrome, Bowman Draft case go up, and I was thinking about taking half the spots and running my luck. But my luck would be I wouldn't win. Because even if I paid half for that price, I would be happy to open and uh, grade out and make some money on this stuff. But yeah, if anybody ever has any questions about, like I said, um, I don't know why I call it Breakers Etiquette Rules 101, but more like unwritten stuff that, you know, you won't ever find out there. And a lot of people see one or two people doing it and they're doing it wrong to begin with, so they mock it or imitate it, whatever you want to call it. But if you ever want to watch good breaks, and I mean... Unless you belong to a good Facebook group, Breakers TV, they got some big breakers out there, man. Watch G1, G1 Cards. Look at um, Platinum Card Breaks. Nasty Breaks don't do it anymore. Fire Hands, Layton Sports Cards, guys like that that break, you know, anywhere from, well, on a release day, it could be three cases to 30 cases, depending on the product. Then it just gives you an idea how they're doing stuff, how they're handling it. Don't worry about their graphics and all the crazy stuff. Look at how they're presenting it with the camera itself and everything and how they're handling the cards of people and stuff like that, how they interact with people in the chats and how when people hit big, how they get excited for them too. You know, there, there's a lot to learn. It's just not, uh, oh, look, at I'm opening packs up and stuff like that. Watch how gentle some people are opening packs, how some aren't. You know, there's cards that come in boxes and plastic cases now to where you're not opening packs, such as NT, Immaculate. Tops has um, Definitive, Definitive Diamond Icons, clearly authentic. It's already cased up. You really can't ruin the card. You would pretty much have to go toss that thing across the room to ruin somebody's up. And if you ever get bored, look up DNT um, scam, man. Brandon Cooks out ninety nine. See what went on there with what that guy did. I mean, and they pinpointed down. I think it was the end of last year or this year because they figured out where this card went to, and nobody ever saw the Tom Brady rookie auto get pulled out of it. It's out of honors, and uh, finally it surfaced, and they traced it back, and 
I would say they're hundred percent sure it was DNT breaks. They robbed that uh, person of the Tom Brady auto. It sold for mad money, mad money. Pretty much, uh, probably half a house uh, mortgage if you bought a two hundred thousand dollar house, and you were still owed payments on it. Mad money, man, mad money. Just like I think at Dominguez's uh, Auto 101 still out there in Bowman. I ain't going to hunt in hobby. But good luck to whoever pulls it because that's definitely your house. Or a good chunk of paying your mortgage off for sure. But again, if anybody ever has any questions, you can email me, catch me live, catch me in somebody's chat, Facebook me, I don't know, Instagram, Twitter me, whatever else is out there that I have on there. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen people skip it. Basically, with Bowman, with paper, people just skip the paper completely. They will skip it completely because they don't care. To me, that paper sells. And it's it proved paper sold when Otani was a rookie. Because before, I never would ship paper out of breaks. Um, I used to make paper, all paper, one spot. But when Otani became a rookie and his first product had paper in 20, 2018 Bowman, I had uh, Otani paper shipped with the Angels. And then normally somebody always wanted all the paper and it was just flat rate cost of shipping in the box and all that stuff. Whoever would be with weight. Uh, me, I try to do make a video and stream at least five times a week. Four is the lowest. Sometimes I do it every day. They say if you if you want to have a successful YouTube channel, you should either post or go live three to five times a week. I don't know. Me personally, I wasn't even going to come live today until I saw something and it kind of upset me. So I was like, I'm just doing this today to... Try to help out the community better people that want to become breakers um, and open up product for other people or even selling cards to other people. Like I said, when I saw this, I don't even know if he's a guy or a kid, sit there and was like, man, check out this card here. And he grabbed that top loader and went like this. And you could tell it was bowed with a card in there. I'm like, what are you doing, guy? It, it, that there really, really there. And then he was just like taking his cards and just tossing them like that. There's nothing in here, of course. And he was just taking them and throwing them like that down card after card. I'm like, you have no respect for the cards and you want to sit there and sell packs to people? Mm -mm -mm. Always, always pay attention to stuff like that. And always, you know, people, you know, I like to say whenever I'm like looking at cards, I'm like, that but probably sells for what, a couple hundred? I don't know offhand. I usually guess unless I purposely seen one get sold or it was in a Raz room, I pretty much know the price. But, you know, don't be uh, the guy that's uh, out there selling a card for two to three times the price. I mean, a one on one out of five, yeah, I got. They're going to be high, and you're just going to guess and settle with whatever you got. Well, you, you know, you can do videos on anything, Caden, offhand. You can do reviews of product by going out there and getting the slides and just talk, putting them on the uh, screen and talking about it. <laughs> it wasn't you, Mountain Girl. It was not you. No, 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 no. I can tell you the people that I've watched this, this past month that have done it have all been probably under the age of 25.
you don't have to have a big community at all either. I mean, when you look at what I have, like almost 2,200 subscribers, I can tell you most of them are from my eBay days or days I was on Breakers TV. Sometimes people just pop in all the time. I mean, look, Chris popped in. I don't think he's been on my YouTube channel probably for about six months to a year. Probably since I was breaking on here back with doing Bowman out of the Facebook group because I, I didn't like doing the videos on Facebook. Oh, my mom is crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, have fun with it. That's the whole purpose of having a channel is having fun with it. I mean, that's why I broke originally because it was fun. I got to engage with people. I didn't have to go outside and hang out with people and stuff like that. I had nothing in common with and try to start a conversation. Come on here. Everybody has a similar interest. Baseball cards or sports cards, however you want to look at it. Where did my dog just go to? I know she was over here wanting something. Probably go out. But yeah, have fun with your channel. That's all it is. Yeah, there you go. There's other people that only come on once a week and do videos. Make your content, you know, just make good content and people come and they'll watch it. Oh, man, it's it's hard to make a fortune now. If you had started, like, in 15, 16 and hoarded stuff, man, there, there's a fortune being made right now onto it. But that's why I just have fun with it anymore. I, I'm not a serious breaker like I was in the past to where I'm breaking two, three times a week while holding down a full-time job. You know, I'm lucky to break once every two weeks and just have fun. My stuff mostly is grading. Uh, setting two shows up a year for card shows and making enough profit off of some stuff I invest in to buy my PC stuff. That's really it. Yeah, stuff like that's always fun. Mail days, opening up a blaster, a couple packs you got from Walmart. You know, tell a story with it. I found these in the clearance, but you wouldn't believe the price I spent on it. Stuff like that there. That's the one thing I'll say is, though, be proactive, you know, or coming into other... I know you're always talking to people's channels. I always see you in there. But, like, going in channels, because they'll come in, they'll see you. They'll start looking at stuff that you have, you know. You build other friendships up. That's why I say there's always different platforms. There's a lot of people that don't come on YouTube. They're just strictly Facebook and Facebook groups. If you go, like, the National Sports Car Convention, there's people from all over out there. Yeah, you always want to have good content. I mean, Grant, there's times I just come on here just to chit-chat because I'm bored too, but I try to always provide some kind of some kind of uh, good fun or something that you learn that you might not have learned where it, it hit me in the old pocketbook pretty good because I didn't know. And... Trust me, by far, I always ask questions, but I was one of them people who were like, man, I always bug these people and ask them questions. I don't want to keep doing it. Then I do it. Cost money in a pocketbook, you know, then somewhere down the road I'm talking to them like, why don't you just call and ask me? I'm like, oh, man, I always bug you. Man, you can always bug me. It don't matter to me. I might not be able to get back to you right away, but I promise I'll get back to you. There you go. And happy early birthday in case I don't see you between now and then too. Yeah, I always have fun mail days, man. 
Kind of like back in when you were in kindergarten, you got to bring toys in for show and tell. That's why I like Mail Days mostly. I always like seeing what people pick up. And I'm like, man, I should I should look at buying something like that. That's a cool card or whatever it may be. Then I start hunting for the stuff. What's up, Magnus? How you doing? Man, don't be talking food. I haven't ate dinner yet. I was packaging stuff up. Then I wanted to come on here and make sure I give all the information that I knew on being a breaker and the unwritten rules, I guess you could say. That a lot of people just don't know. And when you start getting too many breakers out there, or whatever you want to call everybody nowadays, but uh, they, it's just a lack of education and content out there for people to learn from. And now I want to go make some ribs. Mine are in the freezer, though. Mm. Although I do got some kibasi in the fridge. That can go in the grill. Okay, I hear you. What are you doing, crazy dog? Uh, I think I need to take her out. But anyhow, I appreciate everybody stopping by. Because she's going to start barking because I think the farmer's out back. But I do need to take her outside. I forgot to do that. I was getting wrapped up and getting packages uh, ready to go out. But like I said, if anybody ever has questions, you can email me. Hit me on this channel. You see me in somebody else's channel. Hit me up. I'll, I'll be free uh, always to help somebody out, whether it's, you know, anything. Anything I can help out with where I went wrong or can shed some light on what I did to help you out. I will do it in a heartbeat. Hey, how you doing, Jeff? Yeah, sorry, I, I've been on for a little bit, but I don't want to stay on too long tonight. I didn't realize I've been on for like an hour and 20 minutes already. I need to get some dinner done. I got to get stuff sorted and uh, shipped out for some people still tomorrow. And then... I don't think there's anything on TV, so I might just try to have a relaxing night and pop in a channel, watch some breaks or something tonight. But yeah, like I said, if you guys ever need anything, feel free to always ask me on the streams or email, whatever it may be. I will help out the best I can with the knowledge I had. I'll tell you what I did, where I went wrong, and hopefully it'll help out. Hopefully this video helps some people out down the road, too. Um... To where they're like, man, I didn't really thought about that or this. And hearing about some of the stories and what I did with practicing before I actually broke cards and stuff like that. Heck, even when I set up a razors, I went on like three times before I even started raz casting and made sure everything was right. And if you ever need an audience, you're like, hey, man, I'm starting a break. Can you come by tonight at 7? I'm going to do a practice run. I'll come by. So, always feel free to ask for help, man. I'm always around. Other than that, everybody, take care. You can hear the dog. She's being impatient next to me. I'm going to get her fed, too. Have a good night, and I will catch you all on Friday. We'll do a little ripping of 18-19 uh, Don Russ basketball, looking for Luca and Trey. Take care. Have a good night, and watch some NT. NT, uh, first off the line, should be popping on YouTube to see who spent 30000 a case. All right, everybody, take care. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll catch you all later.